Hi friends. Um, I'm finding myself needing to uh, jizz myself up. Um, I've really tried hard to mostly ignore the, um, uh, what should we call it? I don't even know what to call it, the plague. Um, but uh, it seeps through, like uh, I'll share some, a couple of things with you. I don't, there's so many people covering it. I think that's great, but it does have personal impact, not least I shared on Twitter, I got something like 600 likes and 300 retweets where my son was spent a weekend in hospital after being um, engaging with the needlecraft, uh, had a seizure, a really long, what, what they call grand mal seizure. It's been okay since, thank God, but uh, there'll be no return for top ups. So I'm just doing, sorry, ramble introduction. I must share with you the thing to do to speed up um, the speed at which you listen to people. I don't know if you can do it on um, a phone, but certainly on a PC, you just hover over the video and find settings. And then it says watch at normal speed or 1.25 or 1.50. So sometimes when I'm low energy, that's what's needed. But let's just... Um, just keep going with the New Testament. So it's a Bible study. Uh, yeah, and we'll start with a little bit of praise and worship from Talk New York. Going through it in New York as well. <laughs> Father, we thank you that you're holding on to us. Yeah. We thank you that you're holding on in the middle of the storm. You're not letting go. You're not letting go. We might let go, but you've never let go. Let our hearts be strengthened tonight as we make this confession that you're holding on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's no place that is love can reach. There's no place where we can find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me in with your arm red wine. Take me in like an orphan child. Never let go, never be my side. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I am holding on. I am. Come on, love like this. Oh, love like this. Oh, my God, you find. I am overwhelmed with a joy divine. Love like this sets our hearts on fire. I am, I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm. I'll come back to that. That seven-year-old Karen, Karen, um, her dad is the lead singer, musical entertainment director, and her nana is the senior pastor, Dr. Robin. Okay, let's see where we are. Jude, I love the book of Jude. I love it. It's only one chapter again. So let's read this. and We might do a prayer as well. Uh, I, Jude, I'm a slave to Jesus Christ and brother to James writing to those loved by God the Father, 
called and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Now, this is my favourite, one of my favourite scriptures in the entire Bible. Write this on the fridge. Relax. Everything's going to be all right. Rest. Everything's coming together. Open your hearts. Love is on the way. Isn't that the most beautiful? Now, that's... I take my hat off to the message of just for that translation. Relax, everything's going to be all right. Rest, everything's coming together. Open your hearts, love is on the way. Beautiful. And then it says, fight with all you have in you. Dear friends, I've dropped everything to write you about this life of salvation that we have in common. I have to write, insisting, begging that you fight with everything you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and cherish. What has happened is that some people have infiltrated our ranks. Brackets, our scriptures warned us this would happen. Who beneath their pious skin are shameless scoundrels. Wow, isn't that the truth? Both the church and the truth movement. Their design is to replace the sheer grace of God, of our God, with sheer license, which means doing away with Jesus Christ, our one and only master. Isn't it interesting? He opens this chapter telling us to relax, rest, open our hearts, and then the call to action, fight with everything you've got. And I guess in a way, resting is getting grounded, is is getting centered is like letting go of anxiety because it's not productive. When I make decisions based on fear or anxiety, they're not usually the best decisions. When I make decisions based on faith, it's a little bit scary, but what a feeling when, when it comes to pass and you absolutely know the hand of God is all over this situation. You couldn't have, you couldn't have gone from A to B without divine uh, support right. lost stars in outer space is covering everything in this one chapter i'm laying this out as clearly as i can says dude even though you once knew all this well enough and shouldn't need reminding here it is in brief the master saved a people out of the land of egypt later he destroyed those who defected that's tough and you know the story of the angels who didn't stick to their post, abandoning it for other darker missions. That's the third of the heavenly host that followed Lucifer instead of God. But they are now chained and jailed in a black hole until the great judgment day. Now, I must check with revelations when we get to it, because... This is the second time in recent readings where it says that the, the evil ones are chained and jailed until the great judgment day. But I'm pretty sure somewhere in Revelation it talks about uh, the abyss being opened and uh, these dark entities being released for a season. So we'll see as we go along. <clears throat> yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah, which went to sexual rack and ruin, along with the surrounding cities that acted just like them, are another example. Burning and burning and never burning up. They serve still as a stop warning. This is exactly the same program of these latest infiltrators. Dirty sex, rule and rulers thrown out, glory dragged in the mud. And I have to say, there's a whole underbelly in the truth movement, not Christian, of kink, community, uh, porn addiction, drug addiction, and uh, even paedophilia, uh, glorifying what you call it, dominatrix stuff and adult prostitution, adult sex industry, whatever it wants to be dressed up as. But um, beware of a public face differing greatly from what goes on behind the scenes. The Archangel Michael, who also is imitated, by the way, and hijacked and so on by the occult, 
but the genuine Archangel Michael, who went to the mat with the devil as they fought over the body of Moses, wouldn't have dared level him with a blasphemous curse, but said simply, no, you don't. God will take care of you. And I think the King James says, may the Lord rebuke you. I, I got a 30 day ban on Facebook once for saying that. It's just a scripture. May the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> the Satanists reported it as me making threats. But these people sneer at anything they can't understand. And by doing whatever they feel like doing, living by animal instinct only, they participate in their own destruction. I'm fed up with them. They've gone down Cain's road. They've been sucked into Balaam's error by greed. They've canceled out. They're canceled out in Korah's rebellion. These people are eyesores at your love feasts as you worship and eat together. They're giving you a black eye, carousing shamelessly, grabbing anything that isn't nailed down. They're puffs of smoke pushed by gusts of wind, late autumn trees stripped clean of leaf and fruit, doubly dead, pulled up by the roots, wild ocean waves leaving nothing on the beach but the foam of their shame, lost stars in outer space on their way to the black hole. That's quite poetic. Enoch, the seventh after Adam, prophesied of them. Look, the master comes with thousands of holy angels to bring judgment against them all, convicting each person of every defiling act of shameless sacrilege, of every dirty word they've spewed of their pious filth. These are the complainers, the belly aches, grabbing for the biggest piece of the pie, talking big, saying anything they think will get them ahead. But remember, dear friends, that the apostles of our master, Jesus Christ, told us this would happen. In the last days, there will be people who don't take these things seriously anymore. They'll treat them like a joke and make a religion of their own whims and lusts. These are the ones who split churches, thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them, no sign of the spirit. But you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. That's another word for that, it's praying in tongues. Staying right at the center of God's love, keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. This is the unending life, the real life. Go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. Oh, that must be where a lot of people quote something that's not actually in the Bible, which is hate the sin, love the sinner. And this is the closest. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. The sin itself stinks to high heaven. And now to him who can keep you on your feet, standing tall in his bright presence, fresh and celebrating to our one God, our only savior through Jesus Christ, our master, be glory, majesty, strength, and rule before all time and now and to the end of all time. Yes. Wow, guys, we've made it through the whole New Testament, except for the book of Revelation, which some might argue we will start it tomorrow. Some might argue is the hardest book to understand and interpret. But that's pretty cool. For those of you that have walked this with me, thank you. We'll start that tomorrow. Now, let me see if I can just find a prayer. I wonder if I've read that prayer against um, generational curses. I don't keep a note of which ones I've read. Rabbiting. Um, all right, well, the lesson is to learn. Let's pray for this prayer concerning mental torment, because a lot of people, this, um, 
what do I call this medical illusion and trauma that everybody's been under under for 20 months uh, that has affected everything uh, is causing a lot of mental anguish for people. There's been a huge uh, spike in suicides and mental health issues and domestic health, uh, domestic abuse issues, and no doubt child abuse and neglect. So let's just read this from Power Prayers, Warfare That Works, Sheila Zelinsky and Carla Buto. Prayer Concerning Mental Torment. No, uh, it's really small print. You can also pray this for someone else who is being attacked by inserting their name in place of yourself. Statistics now estimate that one in every five people, and that's conservative, struggle with some type of mental illness or mental disorder. Sadly, it is ubiquitous in today's church. And what is even sadder is that it's not being addressed. There is a tendency to avoid discussion of mental illness, to avoid the stigma or label that seems to inevitably attach to the victims. Let us dispose of that idea, for we are dealing with demons and the symptoms they create and foster. Mental illness is not a mere sickness or disease, but a combination of demonic entities. I don't mean to frighten anybody with that statement. Their program is to drive you insane. And they usually work at this gradually. Tormenting like a cancer, they exact the maximum in suffering until the human breaks down. I know quite a few survivors could attest to this. I'll share this on my Facebook and Twitter as well. The battlefield in which the demons work is your mind. There's many, many books written um, that uh, the battlefield is in the mind. The sins of the fathers is one of the main reasons for mental illness as it passes from generation to generation through the bloodline. Mental affliction can take on labels such as panic attack, bipolar disorder, manic depressive disorder, personality disorder, schizophrenia, and the list goes on. Suicide multiplies at an alarming rate in response to the unbearable stresses and strains of everyday life without natural affection. Natural affection, I presume, it's, there's so many people. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone, man, woman to be alone, unless you're called to celibacy as a vocational widowhood. God intended us to find a mate, a soulmate. A husband or a wife and the social engineering that's gone on for the last 70 plus years one of its main goals has to be to break down that structure to break down the family unit and you find that loneliness is at epidemic proportions depression has become an outright epidemic many soldiers return home with post-traumatic stress disorder ptsd which is triggered by witnessing terrifying events causing severe trauma. This term mental illness, mental disorder, is actually rooted in torment, double-mindedness, confusion, and fear. These spirits of infirmity and torment can even come, even cause a chemical imbalance, causing the afflicted person to seek medication to help them, quote, feel normal again. This results in medicating the symptoms, but not getting to the root of the problem. When people seek pharmaceuticals, they are only compounding the problem. The modern term pharmacology, where we get pharmacia, pharmacy or pharmacist, etc., emerged from the word pharmacia, which means sorcery or witchcraft. One variation means a spell giving potion by a witch or magician. Drugs were most 
Now, I do believe in natural remedies, which is a different thing from what they're addressing here. And to be honest, in the past, I have used antidepressants for about six weeks. Um, but long term, I would not, I'm not a doctor. But I've also, when I go into hospital, I will use sleeping tablets just because sleeping in a hospital is nigh on impossible. But I'm very careful not to introduce any long term uh, regime into my life. Especially if you've had it, addiction issues, prescription medication can be every bit as destructive as heroin addiction. Well, heroin is, is called a different name in hospitals, morphine. Um, but uh, prescri I, I've seen people with prescription med addictions and um, it's every bit as tragic as seeing an addict on the street, only it's better hidden. Drugs were most commonly used in pagan worship to hallucinate and to try to get in touch with evil spirits. Yeah. And there's several scripture references to that. Here's the prayer. Father God, I repent for and renounce all whoredom, idolatry, sin and rebellion, including witchcraft and sorcery, even from my ancestors, that may have caused curses of openings for mental infirmities, affliction, torment, and bondage to operate. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind all generationally inherited mental illnesses. I bind the strong man of all mental illnesses and infirmities and break your power and command you to get out of my mind now in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind and break all spirits of bipolar, confusion, deception, delusion, depression, distrust, doubt, double-mindedness, forgetfulness, frustration, hallucinations, insanity, indecision, indifference, incoherence, lunacy, madness, mania, mind-binding, paranoia, personality disorder, PTSD, persecution, procrastination, rebellion, retardation, senility, schizophrenia, suspicion, trauma, vexation, and command you to get out now in Jesus' name. All tormenting spirits, I command you to leave. Any and all spirits that came in through any form of drug use, including alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, etc., all pharmacia, witchcraft, and sorcery spirits, I bind you and break your power and command you to go now in the name of Jesus. I bind every word spoken, every curse cast over me, including labeling me as mentally ill or crazy. I speak neutralization to the unnatural chemicals that have been released in my brain and command them to be balanced the way God designed. I speak peace to my mind. I say, peace, be still to my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical body. I give leave to every familiar spirit of mental torment and mental illness, and I say, mind, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you have not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. I now loose that sound mind to myself. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, there are lobbyists trying to make that kind of praying illegal just as there are lobbyists in America and in Australia and in the UK, I'm sure as well, but I spoke about Julian, Lucian Greaves, um, AKA Doug Masico, Doug Mesner, trying to get the Texas heartbeat anti-abortion or pro-life bill overturned by saying that abortion is a ritual of Satanists 
And as such, they should be able to practice their religious rights. And uh, the OTO in Australia lobbying to say that because certain Orthodox Jewish rabbis are allowed to perform what could be construed as oral sex on baby boys after being castrated, uh, that they therefore claim equal freedom to include babies and infants in satanic rituals. Just So beware the softly, softly lobbyists. While we're all focusing on the medical emergency, people are trying to change laws. This whole drive towards um, hate crimes and uh, censorship and, uh, you know, the taking down of the Ten Commandments, the erecting of Baphomet statues, the, it's, it's an agenda and it's rolling out um, while we're distracted. And it's a very worthy distraction, but uh, beware the sleight of hand, look over here when what's going on is over here just as Gillen Maxwell's trial was due to commence today. An insider said it would probably be delayed. Oh, happy Hanukkah, first day of Hanukkah. To the, I'm not Jewish, but I, those are the feasts that Jesus celebrated. And um, so I tried to do my grafted in version of that. We're not doing Christmas, we're doing Hanukkah. We're having an exchange of presents in um, eight days after Hanukkah. All right. Yeah, that's Revelation. We're starting that tomorrow. All right, let's finish up here, guys. I hope that was powerful for you. I feel better. And this is seven-year-old Karen. Let's say love like this. Come on, this is your confession. Love like this. Oh, my God, to find I am overwhelmed with a joy divine. great trumpet at the weekend as well so i'll be showing that soon it's a new week goodness me it's monday already 
All right, guys, I hope you're holding on and please don't feel alone. My tiny little sphere of influence, I just send prayers and love out to you. Um, hold on to the one that can actually save you. Check the links in the description box. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, hit my GoFundMe if you can. A very modest annual goal on that. And um, share, share. All right, love. Bye.